Hey guys, and welcome back. And if you're new here, thank you for joining us today. So last week we did the e-bike unboxing and I'll go ahead and link that up there on the cards. Mm -hmm. This week, we'll throw a little ride on it. <laughs> so we want to give you some info on how they worked, whether we liked it or not, and even some modifications to it. You know us, modifications. <laughs> So we took the bike to Deerfield Beach from our RV park and it's about how it took us like half an hour mm -hmm. to get there and then half an hour back. Right. Well, on the way there, um, since it was our first time riding them and we did pick quite a long ride to break them <laughs> in, um, I think we were going a little more slow. I think we were being a little more cautious. Yes. So it may have taken us a little bit longer to get there. Um, I think it was faster getting back. I know Angie was going way faster. I had back. more confidence on the way back. I'm not per se like a bike rider. I am afraid of bikes. Um, the whole balancing thing just doesn't jive with me. So I was a lot more cautious going and I went in the front. So Lou was forced to ride slow behind me. <laughs> But it was a nice ride. We obviously went through the RV park. We went through residential neighborhoods. And then um, US-1. US-1 Federal, Federal, Federal Highway, Highway yeah. which is a very busy intersection with lots of great stores and plazas and restaurants. Right. And The bikes have 14-inch tires. So um, I think one of the biggest challenges for Angie is not being able to reach the floor. <laughs> but the way the bike is set up, um, the middle pole or the design of the bike is actually very low so you you can sit, stand up comfortably without uh, feeling that you know the, the frame of the bike is going to hit you in any way and um, it has a lot of comfort um, we changed the seats yeah the seats is one of the mods that we decided to change which if you're going to do any modification to these bikes that's the number one thing I would recommend select that year comfortable especially if you're going for a long ride um, right so yeah. the, the bikes come with comfortable chairs they're not uncomfortable per se right. but we did switch them over to cruiser style uh swing 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 <laughs> uh the really wide ones and they are much more comfortable they also have springs on the bottom so when you hit a bump you start to have shock absorbers so that's that's really good that was a good modification yeah. and i think it helped us on the ride um the other thing we did is that we added a um bottle water bottle holder a water bottle holder mm -hmm. um i mean not that you're drinking water while you're riding because it is really easy to lose like the balance and not be riding forward the moment you take a hand off of the handlebars. handles i did notice that you really mm -hmm. to keep going straight you have to have both hands on the handlebars now the, um, the handlebar is very narrow mm -hmm. it's not like a handlebar that comes all the way around it's very narrow so the minute you remove your hand you automatically feel the balance shift yeah yeah so um but i mean when you stop yeah stopping at a red light at a stop sign whatever it's good to go ahead and get rehydrated especially here in south florida where yeah. it's like crazy hot right, just stopping to drink water i mean it gets yeah. hot you yeah know? yeah we added a, a rear bike rack uh to take things with us the first time we took our backpacks on our backs yeah and um i mean we took a lot of stuff too right i mean we were going to the beach so we were taking our chairs in there and our towels and sunscreen and all the you know good stuff that you want to have with you mm -hmm. and it does get tiring carrying that like on your shoulders and your back and the heat you know mm -hmm. blazing down on you so this modification is something we did after mm -hmm. testing the bikes yeah so we haven't tried the racks yet right but we will be trying them very soon and the chairs that we have in case you're thinking oh my god they took a beach chair the chairs that we have <laughs> are um hiking chairs little tiny hiking chairs that fold down to about yeah that big so they fit just very well in, in a small backpack yeah i mean you'll see the clips um lou had our action cam on her bike mm -hmm. so you can see the backpack i was carrying and yes there was a chair inside of there <laughs> yeah yeah there sure was 
And uh, so the bike came with a bell, so we didn't have to add that to no. it. But we did add the phone holders. That's right. We did have, of course, you need a phone holder if you're going to make any videos. <laughs> Although we weren't using the phone for capturing videos, because we do have another little stand for the action cam. Mm -hmm. um, I think the most important reason why we wanted the phone holder is for GPS. Anywhere that we go with the bikes, if it's going to be a new place, we want to turn on our GPS and mm -hmm. not have to be digging in into our bag to take it out to see what the directions are. So it's easy to just turn the GPS on the phone right there in front of you and you can get guided to where you're going. Absolutely. Uh, it's like, you know, texting and driving. You don't want to do that on the bike either. You know, you want to be aware of the traffic and, yeah. you know, and everywhere you're going and any bumps on the road or anything like that. So, yeah, definitely using the phone while on the bicycle is not acceptable. <laughs> What else did we add? So there is another really oh. cool little mod, which, I mean, it's not necessary for everyone. The reason why we chose to do it is because we're storing our bikes inside the, the truck. The truck cab, is that what it's called? The yeah. cab, the back seats. Mm -hmm. um, and we found that putting the bikes in there together, the pedals were giving us, um, it was taking up more space in the back. Mm -hmm. So Lou looked up these foldable pedals mm -hmm. And decided to install those and just that tiny little modification gave us what an extra 10 inches I think it was um, like eight inches an extra eight each inches pedal is like three and a half inches and so when you fold it I think you lose like a half an inch as it's going up because there's a knob you know when you fold it up the hinge that it's on so I think all together we gain anywhere between six and eight inches and I know it doesn't sound like much yeah when you live tiny <laughs> but in the back of the cab, you know, being able to squeeze them together a mm -hmm. little bit more gives us sort of like an, a narrow pathway that if we go to the store to buy groceries or anything, it's easily an area where you can put things in a, in a linear form, you know, across the way. Um, and basically the cab of the truck is like our sporting goods area. Yeah. <laughs> We have our pickleball bags in there. We have our disc golf bags in there. Yeah. We have our Kadima set yeah. back there. It is a, our action. I have a net, one of those like um, trunk nets, and I have it hooked from one side to the other and inside of that. And we have the seats folded up because right. the seats fold up. So we have the net that sits on the edge of the seat. We have all our sporting gear there. And then the bikes are there too. Yeah, so it's perfect. So we have like all our sporting gear <laughs> It worked um, out really well. So just to recap, the bike comes with a bell. The bike has um, cruise control. It has disc brakes. Um, it weighs 41 pounds. Um, what folds on the bike is the handlebar. The handlebar comes down. The bike itself doesn't fold. The frame of the bike doesn't fold. Just the handlebars fold. Um, they travel about um, 15 miles. Okay. And... Uh, they could travel further with pedal assist. So all that means is that if you pedal, you give the battery a break, so it'll extend the battery. That's basically what that means. Uh, they go about 15 miles an hour, and that's like exceptional conditions. The perfect rate, weight, the perfect uh, terrain, and you get 15 miles an hour or 15 mile distance. And while on the topic of the battery, we ended up using just a quarter of the battery going and a quarter of the battery coming. They were fully charged before mm -hmm. we went. And like I mentioned, it was about half an hour ride, mm -hmm. three miles, Lou says. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we used six miles, an hour ride, half of the battery. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad at all. No. no. So if you remember, um, I think in the unboxing video, we had mentioned that a couple of items came either broken or a little scuffed nothing of importance the right. frame itself the bike itself was in immaculate condition even though the box was destroyed yeah. <laughs> the box was uh, completely destroyed yes. i mean like of course there were and the missing parts were like reflectors that's what was missing we were missing reflectors yeah um that they send you to add to like the back of the bike and the front and the wheels and we were missing uh from one bike mainly Okay. one of the boxes was like the most destroyed <laughs> and um one of the things that i was concerned about is that as i said to you before the the i don't know what to call it the pole for the handlebars okay. 
um, that's what folds down. There's a lever there that you push. It pushes out. And once it pushes out, it has um, a mechanism that folds it down. As you fold it up and lock it, lock that lever. The lever has a slit on the side. And there's a ring that's designed to go there that you sort of spin. And it has a, a it slips into that hole and locks the lever from opening. And those are one of the... Both bikes had that broken. And I was concerned about that. Even though, like, locking that lever is, like, epic, right? Like, right. I mean, it, it really locks you in. You had to put in some muscle. Yeah, no, it really locks in. It's no game. It's no... no it, it's not, you really have to, like, unlock it and lock it. Yeah. But I was still, like, in my mind, I was still like, man, I need that little ring that sort of, Protection. you know, locks it in. And when I contacted them, I sent them pictures of the boxes, how they arrived, and I sent them a list of the items that were missing in the boxes. And they emailed me within 24 hours. The lady that I communicated with was Nathania. And they were extremely apologetic about the way the boxes arrived, extremely apologetic about the items that were missing. Or broken. Or broken. And they wanted to see how they could make it right. I mean, they literally asked, what can we do to make it right? Uh, having said that, you guys need to understand that I ordered refurbished B. There's refurbished, there's new, which is not available, it's out of stock. There's refurbished A and there's refurbished B. At refurbished B, at the time that we purchased it, we saved $150 for each bike, okay? I thought it was worth it. I still think it's worth it. Um, and the customer service was above and beyond. She communicated with me through email three or four times. I sent her a list of the things that I wanted. I didn't want everything. I really didn't. Um, and the one thing I really, really wanted were those rings. Right. She wanted to make sure that she secured that bar. Yeah, I really wanted those rings. I had other ideas what of what I was going to do if it wasn't possible. But I really wanted those rings. I think they're proprietary to the design of the bike. I'm not sure I can get it from somewhere else. I think I can sort of jimmy it, you know? Um, and I would have, but she emailed me every week for three weeks, giving me an update of, we've got the parts. We're sending it out with, you know, a grand shipment. Um, hasn't been sent out yet. I mean, literally, she kept yeah. up with me Tracking every number. single thing. Yeah, and they... They sent it. Yeah. They sent everything. Yeah, so not only did we get the rings, they also sent the little reflectors to put on the wheels. Mm -hmm. So you were able to put that on. Mm -hmm. Not all four were missing. We were just missing one. Just one. <laughs> so she went ahead and installed that one too. How much do you like your bike? I like I like my bike a lot. Um, I do want more practice on it. I feel like the first time I rode it was super scary because it goes so fast <laughs> and then sidewalks sometimes curve and then there's poles or there's a bus bench. obstacles and then yeah it's like an obstacle course <laughs> and you're going fast and you don't think like break duh i'm so used to just throwing my feet down hello i'm not a bike rider um so i was just freaking out like i'm gonna crash but on the way back i gained a little bit more confidence and i think the more i ride it the more confident i'll feel um yeah, and I was zooming. I was in zoom zooming. It was she so was much fun. She was zooming on the way back. It was so She was much so fun. far ahead of me. It wasn't even funny. She was. <laughs> she used the pedal assist a lot more than I, I did, did yeah. but I still only use half of the battery going and coming. So I wanted to get my bad. exercise in, knowing that if by any chance my legs would give out, I could still go. You know, and uh, we're motorcyclists. We, yeah, we've motors. We've had two or three motorcycles. We've had like two or three scooters. Yeah. Um, but Angie never drives. It's not her thing. Um, but the bike is small, as you see in the video. So going 10 miles an hour in a, on a bicycle feels a lot different than going 50 miles an hour in a 750 shadow. <laughs> you know, that's a much different feeling. So I love it. I think it's like a, an awesome compromise not having a second car mm -hmm. for us to be able to drop off the, the truck to get any work on it. Uh, while well, we don't have the truck for fun to go to the beach. I mean, I just think I've been wanting one for a while, you have. but I couldn't justify the cost. And I know that this is like the low end of the electric bikes. And you know what? We're, we're fine with that. Yeah. For our purpose, 
it's going to be perfect. It's a great investment for a second source of transportation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, guys. That's it. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed our little review and our little upgrades that we did to our e-bikes. If you did, please give us a big thumbs up. Comment down below if you have one. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have one, if you're considering it, which one you're considering? Yeah, if you're considering this one, I mean, this is the Jetson E-Volt Pro um, with the pedals. There's one without pedals. <laughs> uh, let us know if you would consider this bike. And as always, if you haven't subscribed, please do so now. Make sure you click the notification bell so you can get notified every time we upload a video. And as always, thanks for watching. And we'll see you soon. Bye, guys. We're coming back because we forgot to mention. It's new to us. It is new to us. Yeah. We now um, we officially have an Amazon store. store. <laughs> we were approved as Amazon affiliates. Um, so while Jetson is not on Amazon. It is not. All the accessories that we have for our e-bike is. Yep. So we'll go ahead and link um, all of our preferred accessories that are on our bike yeah. um, down below for you. That's so right. If you're interested, go check them out. Help us out. Add them to your cart. And if you don't want to add those to your cart, then so shop from our link so that yes. we can get a little something, something. Just you're not a paying tiny extra. Thing so that we can get on the road <laughs> faster. Yes. Yes. All right, guys. Be sure to check out the description below. Thank you. <laughs>